technician to put the zoom on screen because the moderator will be moderating through zoom. whenever you want to start. Just to ask our technicians, if you could unmute our moderator, her name is Fanny Rotino, F-A-N-N-Y. I see she's still muted. Do you mind unmuting her, please? Because she will moderate the session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wonderful. So I think we're all set, are we? I think we are, yes, Bunny. Thank you. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So, uh, so yeah, then I think we can start. Um, thank you very much um, for having us today. Um, I would like to really thank the IGF team and this is my enormous pleasure to be here with you today and uh, to moderate this session about how we can keep our children safe online. So let me very quickly um, introduce myself. Um, my name is Fanny Rotino. I work at the International Telecommunications Union, the ITU, the UN Specialized Agency for ICTs, and I do lead uh, the Child Online Protection Initiative within ITU, um, focusing on all the issues that we are uh, going to hear today from very different contexts. So um, just um, to introduce a little bit the topic, um, online safety, children's rights online, child protection is a very vast theme um, that a lot of stakeholder and stakeholder groups um, have a role to play in, um, have responsibilities and opportunities to play um, and, and, um, and to support um, the um, creation of a better and, and more empowering online environment for children. And we will hear a lot about that today. So um, I would like to highlight that this session has been prepared by national and regional IGF initiatives in a very bottom-up and collaborative manner throughout the last year to really be able to share insights from um, individual contexts. And this makes this session very special and uh, very, very relevant to the overall and global conversation about online safety for children. I'd like to thank also um, Mrs. Zaina Buharb of the Lebanon IGF for her support in the online moderation on the Zoom platform. I'd further like to thank our rapporteur uh, today, who is Mr. Igonor Oshaka Samson from the Nigeria IGF for his support. And then I'd like to introduce our speakers um, that we have here uh, today, some most actually in the room with you um, in Ethiopia, um, others online with, with me. So I'd like to introduce our first speaker who's from the chat, IGF, Mr. Abdel Jalil Bakar Boy, who is uh, um, uh, on, uh, on site with you. Then from the China IGF, we have Mrs. Haiyang Gu, who is the general manager for the Legal Affairs Department at the Sina Group. And then we have from the Nepal IGF, represented today by Mr. Babu Ram Arial on site uh, with you in the room. We have from the Nigeria IGF, Mrs. Elizabeth Giza, who is the principal manager of the NCC, the Nigerian Communications Commission. And then we have online Lucien Castex from the French IGF as well. And then we have two young representatives um, that will be here um, and that will actually 
start. So I'd like to introduce uh, Diana, who is a 16 year old student from uh, Slovenia um, and a member of the Microsoft uh, Council for Digital Good um, and who will um, open this conversation together with Aime um, and share with us, um, you know, their experiences as children under 18, as young people in the online environment. And uh, without further ado, I'd like to give the floor to Diana and Aime. Thank you so much. Just if you could unmute, please, uh, Diana and Aime. I just posted it to chat their names. Thank you. Just asking our technician to unmute Diana. It's D I A N A. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Hi. Can you hear me? Sorry, my internet just died. So hi, my name is Diana. I am a 16 year old and I come from a generation that grew up with phones literally tattooed in our hands. And I think that's not a bad thing. I think that's a very good thing because we have so much experience and we became much more resilient towards the internet. Now, personally, I have not experienced any kind of cyberbullying, but I saw and heard a lot about it. And for example, uh, my friend, they were a victim of hate speech regarding their religion. And what cyber bullies don't realize when they go and target someone is that when they do target someone, it's not just the victim, it's also their family, their friends. And I think that approach is very much immoral and I don't think that should be normalized nowadays. Now, every time I, what I'm realizing nowadays is that People are getting so confident behind these boxes that they start saying things they would never say in real life. For example, if someone comments something negatively on a post, I suggest them they ask themselves, if you saw that person in real life instead of a picture, would you actually say that to their face? Now, in my opinion, my generation has the power, has the experience. We heard a lot, we saw a lot about cyberbullying, flaming, grooming, whatever, that we have the power to finally step up and help all the internet users, especially the most vulnerable ones, which are children. Thank you. Thank you so much, Diana, for sharing, um, you know, this very personal experience of, of your friend. And I think very important point on, you know, violence being normalized online and behavior being very different. So thank you. Thank you for giving that that concrete example. I think we will hear from Aime now. I'm in the participants list. Diana, if you see her, maybe you can post in the chat. Or or if Ima is there, maybe you will, with another name. Ah, Claire. Is it Claire maybe instead of Ima? Maybe you can post in the chat so I, that I can understand it. No, it no, no, it's not me. I, I'm taking the place of Lucien Castex for friends. Ah, I see. Okay, thank you, Claire. Then Thank maybe you. funny. I don't see Ima. We can give her the floor maybe later if you agree and move on. Thank you. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. that sounds great. No, and I think you know we already have some some food for thought here from Diana. Thank you so much again um, for sharing this. So you know we had, um, and we do know that actually you know um, from what children tell us and uh, you know Diana you're here to confirm there is on the one side there is no difference in the perception of what is online and offline right there is no different lives it's all one life it's your experiences and the impact of the you know uh, experiences online on everything that is offline are very clear and very you know harsh and existing and the other way around so you know how can we 
um, and you know, in this complex ecosystem of stakeholders, how can we actually make sure that you know you feel empowered and safe in the online environment? Um, you know, to actually benefit from all the great opportunities that that the online gives um, us. So um, I'd like to invite our speakers now to share a little bit. Um, you know about about their um, experiences and approaches in in their individual context to tackle this question. So, um, if I could give the floor to Mr. Abdel Jalil Bakar Bong on site to please share the um, experiences from the Chad IGF and how um, yeah how we can actually and how the different stakeholders can create that safe space for children online. Thank you. Hi everyone, <clears throat> thank you so much Fanny for giving us the floor. So my name is Abdijeril Bashar, I'm coordinating national IGF and I think that this session is a very important session because uh, we are protecting our uh, next generation, we are protecting our people, our young, our children and in chat we have, uh, <coughs> we have experience on that because uh, nowadays uh, the young people uh, uh, using internet in school. They have their own uh, phone, they have our own computer. Uh, we know that in chat, uh, internet uh, speech is not than more than 10% and uh, national, but uh, people in school, the young people using, using internet, but for them it's more uh, social media. And we are facing a lot of things uh, about social media. Uh, they don't know how to use, the, they buy or the parent buy them the phone and they give them the phone. I mean, how to use, they don't know. So we are going to TikTok. Most of people that we receive uh, uh, uses and uh, TikTok, and sometimes in WhatsApp and Facebook, there are some ladies who are going to school to do some workshop because as NRIs, we are collaboration with uh, with ISOC, with House, with others, uh, Wenag Labs, with others, uh, ICT organization. So we are, we are doing conjoint uh, activities in the school. So our focus is more in school because we see the problems in school. And when we are going there, most of them uh, is, is, is the girls that some people using their photo or uh, some people tell us, send my pictures. The same after that, they are going to have another things. E harassment come to me, something like that. We, we experience emergency. And in chat, we have ecosystem we call National uh, Agency, Cyber Security Agency, is a new agency. So their focus is how to protect our uh, cyber security space. And we're still working with them to put the national uh, national strategy, cyber security strategy, and more focus on and, uh, and, uh, children protection online, because we we saw that people don't know how to use internet and good things. So we are going to train them. And uh, as IGF uh, chat, we organize also the separate internet day. Uh, I think that everyone knows here separate internet day. So we go to the school to take. Uh, Ten, five people from school, so gather them in uh, in one room to train them for three days about how to use internet, good things, how to open, how the parameters. People open sometimes Facebook uh, with numbers, not with email. So we need to give the opportunity how to create an email to protect their uh, personal data. It's QL. So, and after how to train to go to social media to be safe and not to accept any requests. So just as some advice we give them. And after that, we gather them all together and to do the uh, the, uh, the several and ten a day. So, so the issue is that we, until now we don't have a national strategy to protect uh, uh, children online because any ministry work on the side because anything uh, touch uh, children is related to the Ministry of Education, and we have Ministry of ICT. So, how these two ministries we can collaborate? That's the thing because we know our uh, in our uh, local context is very difficult collaboration with the ministry. Every ministry that this is my project, this is my project, and that's a problem. And the national cyber security is not linked to the ministry of ICT with Ministry of Education, linked to the presidency of Chad. So that's the issue also. So as they're not linked to the premier uh, to to the government, only say they relate to the president. So now we are working to them to set up a national strategy and more focus on and, uh, and child protection. So, so I need to stop there. I don't know if you have a question. So, thank you. 
Thank you so much, Abdul Jadil. I think uh, you raised so many very, very important points um, that we see in so many contexts. So, I mean, obviously, you know, children are the demographic group, um, children and young people that connects most, right? And that is most connected. So just as an example, in Ethiopia, we have around more than 40% of the young people that are connected. But when it comes to the educators and to the adults that are there to supposedly guide them, um, you know, through the risks and opportunities online, um, we have only 18% that are even, you know, connected at all, and much less that actually, um, you know, are aware of what children do online and understand what they do online. So, I mean, there is a huge gap there to actually provide support to children, um, you know, even when harm occurs, right, to be able to respond to it. Um, so, I think the educational piece is, is is really key um so um you know to, to tackle this so as as you know one of the stakeholder groups at the same time you mentioned the work in silos which is which is indeed uh, something you know due to the different responsibilities so i think you know the national strategy development that would actually give roles and responsibilities to the different stakeholders and how they collaborate and then within which frameworks is um is indeed a, a key a key step to take. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I'd like to share the same question um, with uh, Hayan Gu, Mrs. Hayan Gu, uh, next, please, to share a little bit from the China IGF perspective. Um, what can we do and how do these different stakeholders can work together? How do we avoid um, efforts happening in silos and therefore being with much less impact and results um, in your perspective? over to you. I think she is on lot. Yes, she's online. So, um, can we can we unmute unmute her? Yes, a colleague. I think this is how you spell the name. So, I'll post oh, the sorry. Name the oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I I think yeah, it's all opening. And uh, uh, may I have the opening the camera, please? The camera is closed. I want to share. Yeah, please, the moderator, to help me to open the camera, please. Okay, thank you. And I want to share my PPT. So please hold a minute. Oh, can you see that? Oh, good. Thank you. I'm Helen Gu from the Sina Group. I'm the general counsel of the Sina. And uh, thanks very much for the invitation from the IGF Chinese. Um, my topic of the discussion is on um, uh, Chinese protect protection, the influence of the internet, the daily life. Children continues to strengthen. According to the latest survey, lasting survey data, the internet usage rate of the Chinese children is 99 percentage and the preparation of children who have access to the internet before the age of 10 is increasing. Chinese government is speeding up the drafting of the regulations on the protection of children on internet and improving the supporting system to provide stronger legal protection for children. Weibo, as the social media platform popular in China, was the first to pay attention to the issue of the children's online safety and constantly updated its protection measures. In 2018, Weibo launched an adolescent model. Okay. And then in 2019, adolescent model was optimized, including strengthening the content audit mechanism, removing commercial features such as recharge, reward, membership, 
and advertising. And in June 2021, we will continue to optimize and improve underage protection features, such as the time lock and the content points adjust to meet the needs of children to gain knowledge and increase their sight. In my opinion, the main online safety risks of children are as follows: first, the influence of bad information. Bad information not only affects the children's learning, moral quality, and social interaction, but it also seriously induces them to commit crimes. Second, personal privacy leakage. Children are not aware of risks on, of online world, and their awareness of self-protection is weak. So their personal information and privacy are more likely to be leaked and violated. Thirdly, indirect addiction. Children are addicted to internet for complex reasons, such as their own curiosity, weak self-control, desire for recognition, and other psychological features. Fourth, internet illegal infringement, especially the cyberbullying of children, is becoming a global social platform on the social media. To avoid online safety risks faced by children, we can take the following measures. First of all, implement a more rigorous and scientific content audit system on the internet, with the relevant technical support, such as the fingerprint identification,、uh, face recognition technology, and etc. In the second place, establish a special protection system for children's personal information and privacy. To establish a system for collecting personal information. For legitimate purposes, network service providers should not collect personal information without legitimate purposes. To obtain the content of their guidance, to impose obligation on network operators and severely punish data leakage caused by their security vulnerabilities. Thirdly, Clarify the restriction system for the network services providers and operators to provide network content, including the content which violates the law, social morality, and online safety. Fourth, excuse me, Hayan. Sorry、yeah. to interrupt you. Um, your slides do not move for me.、Yeah. I don't know if that is only if we're still on the second slide. Uh, I'm on the third page of the PPT. So, can you we, see that? We can only see the second. Maybe if you can stop sharing and share again. Oh, okay. Thank you. Can you see that? No, I still. We still see the same slide. The first one or the second one? The second one. Nothing has moved. <laughs> okay, maybe、uh, I will try again. Let me try again. Yes. Of the main online safety risks faced by children, we still see the second slide. I think it's loading, though. I think now we have another slide. Now it's a black screen. Black screen. Okay. I I I think Zoom is not 
very good use for in in Beijing. <laughs> Can you see the page? Yes, yes, that's page perfect. Four. Great. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, Please four. go ahead. Uh, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thirdly, uh, clarify the restriction system for network services providers or operators to provide network content, including the content which violates the law, social morality, and online safety. Fourthly, construct a multi-body collaborative governance model under the unified agency. It should closely collaborate with relevant entity from the judicial and the administrative departments, industry groups, internet enterprises, social organizations, families, and schools to jointly establish a set of protection model with mutual collaboration among the linkage of various parties. Last but not least, improve technical measures for network protection. Due to the complexity of the network information technology, effective implementation of the law must also rely on in advanced technical measures for the network protection for children. Technical measures also have a dual nature, both legal and technical. For example, technical measures should be improved, such as the biometric identification, warning system for online game time, uh, and etc. So that's all. Thanks for your listening. That's all my speech. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing and uh, our apologies for the technical issues. Um, no, I, th I think you raised a very important point and also, you know, specifically in addition that the technical features that, you know, when you were mentioning in the end, because obviously we know, I mean, technologies, so many of these tools have two sides um, of, of the coin, so they can actually be those exposing children to risk, but at the same time, we can leverage on them and use them to better protect children or even to respond to harm uh, once it occurs. So I think um, a very important piece um, to additionally add, you know, to to that uh, complex ecosystem of of, um, of stakeholders and tools that we that we have in our in our hand. Thank you so much um, for sharing. So um, yeah, I think uh, we we have a little bit of time left for um, the speakers. So I would like to move to our next one. Um, uh, Mr. Baburam Arial from the Nepal IGF um, to share your perspective um, on uh, challenges maybe that exist in the response to online safety issues um, in the in the country and how we can work together how can these different stakeholders play a role to protect children online thank you thank you very much uh, it's very uh, significant that uh, our previous uh, colleagues they have already uh, highlighted the importance of protecting the child online uh, not only online protecting child is protecting our future as well so uh, it's very important that there are various stakeholders uh, i'll jump into that side when uh, we uh, talk about protecting child online then it's uh, not only protecting child we need to protect them at various uh, places like house home, their own home the school, if you send your uh, kids to any uh, other schools like music school or, or sports uh, centers and, and all these stakeholders need to be understand that uh, the what is the importance of uh, safety of a child. So uh, ne in Nepal, we uh, through Nepal IGF, we started a discussion of uh, protecting on child online and we also uh, uh, with the collaborative uh, approach with uh, various stakeholders, we started uh, capacity building programs for child. But when we discuss with the child about various uh, safety measures and all these things, they uh, ask us to uh, conduct uh, similar kind of capacity building programs for their parents as well as their teachers because uh, they have more exposure uh, on digital contents to their parents uh, gadgets and if uh, their parents gadgets are vulnerable obviously that leads to the vulnerability of uh, a kid so similarly when uh, as we referred 
because of this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, our kids from very young age, they moved to uh, digital space. Previously, we used to uh, uh, recommend that not to use uh, these uh, gadgets, but now they are forced to use as as basic uh, of their education. So, uh, when uh, they are exposed in their education platforms, then uh, the use of their education platforms has also to be uh, uh, protected, and through the uh, all these cha channels that uh, we need to protect, we can protect our kids, and not only by uh, checking this these stakeholders' stage. Uh, another layer of protecting child is uh, law making process and enforcement of law. In Nepal, uh, uh, Telecom Regulator, Nepal Telecommunication Authority uh, has endorsed uh, uh, a guideline for um, service providers what kind of uh, uh, standard they have to maintain while uh, providing access uh, to kids. It is uh, defined uh, by, the op by the regulator. And recently, uh, uh, Ministry of uh, uh, Elderly Women and Child also uh, develop certain uh, directives uh, for not only to the operators. Uh, the regulator can only guide to uh, operators, but ministry uh, develop uh, guidance uh, or, or directives for all the stakeholders, including schools, libraries, uh, operators, parents. So uh, these are very uh, significant area uh, to uh, intervene uh, in that way. So, uh, as I mentioned, the layer of uh, technology, the layer of social engineering, the layer of uh, lawmaking process and law enforcement process, these are very uh, significant layers how we, c we can uh, protect our kids. And uh, one of the uh, questions that uh, we'll be, uh, we would be uh, discussing on this uh, session that uh, whether uh, there could be a significant role of uh, technical community or not? Of course. Uh, uh, nowadays, there are lots of uh, uh, technical uh, solutions, lots of uh, gaming solutions uh, kids are using. And for example, Roblox is there, uh, and kids are very uh, uh, randomly using uh, these kind of platforms, and uh, these uh, plat platforms uh, could be uh, one of the uh, channel uh, to, to seduce kids uh, and uh, uh, also uh, it needs to be protected uh, through their peers engagement, how peers are engaged in, in these uh, technologies. For example, if I give uh, from my own family, my, ki my uh, daughters, they also use uh, various uh, uh, apps and if we don't closely uh, observe our kids, uh, if we don't guide our kids, uh, how to safely use this, then uh, definitely uh, that may lead to the vulnerability. So uh, uh, one of major questions for the uh, designer or uh, uh, the technical uh, uh, community is, uh, it should be designed uh, keeping safety of kids rather than making certain money out of the use of this uh, uh, technology only. So uh, at the in initial stage, I say these uh, things and, and when a uh, discussion develops then I'll contribute accordingly. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much for highlighting very, very important and additional points, I think. So you mentioned safety by design. So I think this is a, you know, it, it is a core element, safety by design, privacy by design, to actually be the minimum standards, um, you know, for services and products um, that, that children access. And um, not even necessarily only those that are designed for children, but even those that are not. But children do use them because we, as a matter of fact, and we had that there's a lot of social media platforms um, that are not supposed to be used by children under 13, but they definitely are. So, um, you know, these kind of considerations are key, um, I believe. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks also, you know, for, for the sharing of, um, of, uh, of uh, directives and guidelines. Um, and we had also in, in the chat um, the ITU guidelines on child protection were shared that can be certainly of, of help 
for national um, adaptation. So with that, I'd like to give the floor to our next speaker, who is Elizabeth. Uh, I see you're already on screen. So uh, without further ado, over to you um, for your thoughts on the matter. All right. Thank you so much, Fanny. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. So permit me to share my slides um, quickly. I'm um, just to confirm that you can see my slides. Perfect, yes, we can. Okay, all right, thank you. So um, for the Nigerian context, we have been able to um, localize um, the IT revised guidelines, the guidelines that were released in 2020 prior to the COVID um, um, pandemic. So we were able to localize it to fit into the Nigerian context, and we're also able to translate that docu the, the documents into three major languages, that's Yoruba, Hausa, Igbo, and also Pidgin, to enable you know more children and and their teachers you know have, have access to to translated documents we also have um, the customization of europol document which is um keeping the children safe online advice for parents and caregivers so i'll just go through i don't know is my slide changing can you see yes okay so for the localization you know the initial name provided by IT was Sango, but back home here in Nigeria, Sango can, is translated to God of Thunder and Lightning and you know, has a bad meaning. So we had to change the name and we decided to go with Agent COP and we did this with children. We called children for an online meeting, explained to them what we we're trying to do and they were the ones that finally came up with this name. So we got, we localized the documents and we also changed some of the names in the documents to suit you know, local names so they can connect to the names they hear. Um, and then this one speaks to the translation of that document. So um, the English version now has the pigeon, Yoruba, House and Igbo to help the children, you know, pick what language they understand and now, you know, get the advice they need. So there's this one and there's also the um, online safety activity book is also translated and it's going to be uploaded on the NCC's website so that that way everyone can have access to the soft copy of the documents and be able to use it. Now, for the um, for the Europol document, we were able to customize it, and it's called "Keeping the Children Safe Online: Advice to Parents and Caregivers." So it was done in 2020, and we usually use this document when we're going out for awareness, especially to teachers or to parents, to explain to them what they need to do. Then um, we have a lot of awareness programs by the commission where we visit town halls, we visit um, communities, we visit markets, you know, schools, and all that. So we use the opportunity to tell them what they need to do at their own level to help the children. And then uh, before, okay, we have a document which was released in 2021. It's a policy called National Cybersecurity Policy and Strategy. So in that document, it speaks to um, child online protection. There's just a particular chapter that speaks to it. So from that, um, the Honorable Minister of Communications and Digital Economy this year in March came up with, um, inaugurated a committee of different stakeholders so that's like government academia industry and they have now come up with this draft document called nigerian child online protection policy and strategy it's actually national sorry that's a typo national child online protection policy and strategy so we got input from a lot of stakeholders in coming up with this document because we wanted it to be you know wholesome so once this document is approved Every stakeholder group knows the part they need to play. The technical knows, the industry will know, academia will know. You know, we brought in all stakeholders to give their input. So we believe that this document is going to go a long way in helping us to harmonize our, our um, efforts as regards child online protection in Nigeria. So some other initiatives which we have, uh, there's this program we call Parents 101. It's called Parents 101 for Digital Citizens and it's targeted at parents. You know, most times the parents are the ones who don't know what to enable on their devices. So we decided to take it a step further and start speaking to the parents instead of always, you know, pushing the blame to the schools or to the teachers or to educators. So we have had just one run so far, but the, the feedback was very, very positive because we had like um, 
activities that parents will do and we show them exactly how to set it up on their devices. So we hope to have four more runs where we're going to speak to more parents and then these parents are expected to now go out and also speak to other parents in their spheres of influence as a way of improving and fastening the awareness of what they need to do to keep their children safe online. So we're also using that opportunity to talk to um, this group of uh, associations in schools called parents teacher associations where you have the parents there, you have the teachers and then everyone in schools come together and then what we want to do is that every participant from the Parents 101 workshop is supposed to be like an ambassador and carry this message into the parent-teacher associations. That way we can spread the news faster and help everyone understand what they need to do in the shortest possible time. We also have um, ambassadors who are the young children we usually speak to. So most of the decisions we take, we always try to bring in the children and get their own view and then take a decision as uh, as, let's say, as a country, yeah. And then we collaborate with international and local organizations. We have, um, there's an organization called um, NAPTIP. They are very instrumental when it comes to, you know, dealing with any form of child abuse, whether online or physical. So when it comes to the online aspect, they help with the, um, speaking to the child, helping the child overcome what the, what the challenge is and also different forms of arrest. They have that power, so we're collaborating with them in that aspect. We also collaborate with Child Online Africa, ITU, EU, uh, Ministry of Women Affairs, and then the Office of National Security Advisor in Nigeria. So um, we also have some complaint handles so that you know when children have a challenge, they should be able to complain and then we can take it up from there. So for NCC, we have the 622 and the COP at ncc.gov.ng. Then we have Chechiara Foundation. They also are very instrumental to help children, whether legal or to help them overcome whatever challenge they face. They also have the NAPTIP, which I already mentioned earlier. They have their numbers and the info there. So um, that's it for now for the Nigerian context. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing, you know, this very, very comprehensive approach and indeed not only focusing on a large scale prevention, um, you know, and the necessary frameworks, but also the response in the end and the system that is in place for referral and support. And I think it was very key and interesting that you um, highlighted that, you know, beyond the national cybersecurity strategy, this distinct policy and strategy development facilitates the orchestration, right, and uh, the roles and responsibilities yes um of everyone and i think also the ambassador piece is is key because we do know that children uh, you know learn more through peer-to-peer -peer learning and similarly yeah. this is the case for you for adults in certain contexts so um so thank you thank you so much for sharing thank you thank you and uh, with that i'd like to turn to our um last speaker um i think we have claire uh instead of lucien so from the french igf to please share the insights from France. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the floor. Uh, Claire Melanie Popino, I'm working at French Ministry of Justice and I am newly Secretary General of Internet Society France. Um, I will speak about the, the context um, first and uh, some, uh, some initiatives uh, in France next. Um, in France, children's rights are recognized by the law and enshrined in the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child. And France has acceded to the convention ratified in 1990, as well as uh, its three optional prote protocols, uh, armed conflict, prostitution, pornography. Um, both in France, both the courts and administrative bodies ensure that the best interests of the child are respected. France also actively advocates for an increased child protection and to pay for particular attention to the rights of girls. Um, with regard to children protection during armed conflict, France played a leading role in the adoption of uh, Security Council Resolution uh, 1539 and 1612 for those who love uh, numbers. <laughs> Uh, setting up a monitoring and reporting uh, mechanism on grave violations of children's rights um, and uh, a security council working um, group meets uh, as needed to decide on an action to be taken. Uh, on a, the global level, France also actively fight against human trafficking and transnational organized 
crime, which have an active part in children trafficking and exploiting, uh, which uh, is one of the matter online for, for all children. France uh, is also involved in a number of international initiatives, in particular the Christchurch School Against Violent Extremism Online, launched after the 2019 killings by New Zealand and France. Same goes in the European level, but I will pass that. Um, with regard to child protection, uh, every child has a fundamental right in terms of health care, education, justice, and social protection. And there is a, a, a number of public bodies uh, who collaborate to protect such rights. Uh, one uh, one of those is the defender or defender of rights, uh, le défenseur des droits, uh, and raises awareness and um, is tasked with ensuring these rights are actually respected. We can call call this institution. You can uh, encounter some people of this institution to explain your your uh, right problem. The defender is aided by the deputy with the defender of children. And there is also the French National Consultative Human Rights Commission, uh, also actively monitors the respect for human rights in France, acting as a counselor for the government as well as a human rights watch. Um, this French national human rights institution uh, include two, two colleagues uh, of uh, Internet Society uh, France, uh, especially Lucien Castex, uh, indeed. Um, without uh, going to, to, to into length, the Ministry of Justice is also engaged in the protection zone in France. And last, but uh, not, not really last, I mean, <laughs> Uh, not least, <laughs> a new initiative was not on uh, during from Thursday, November 10 in Paris. And uh, this uh, this lab, the Children Online Protection Lab, brings together platforms, uh, NGOs, and regulators to address the fee. Claire, I think we lost you there yeah. for a moment. Yeah, I, I lost you too. <laughs> I, okay. I'm back. Do you hear me? Yes, we do. We do. Okay. You just mentioned. The, I was speaking about the, the, app, about the, the children lab. online. Indeed. Maybe um, if if you if you wouldn't mind. Um, yeah. Okay. That's right. Maybe you can turn your camera off so that we can understand you a little bit better. I'm sorry, it seems the bandwidth is not with us. Okay. We are losing you again. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, uh, yes, I was speaking about this, uh, this lab, the Children Online Protection Lab, uh, who brings together platform, NGOs, regulators to address the growing of minors to internet pornography, cyberbullying, or violence. And um, uh, it aims at achieving a new multi stakeholders to identify assets and democratic process tools safely. Uh, I just want to speak about one other thing. Um, I can't hear you. You are mute. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't say anything, but I think we, we're losing you a little bit. Can you hear um, me? Yeah, we can. Yeah. Okay. Sorry for that. <laughs> um, just one more thing about um, um, an, an another initiative. Uh, the French Ministry of Education has developed a new program in order to detect, prevent, and make stop bullying in school and link to that cyberbullying. Uh, 
this na the name of this program is FAR program. Uh, the key idea uh, in order to protect children in the digital space, uh, as in the physical space, is that adults had to be trained, educated on those matters. Children have to know that adults are referent, are, are true guidance and can, can be spoken to. Um, obviously, uh, in France and in other countries, there is still a need of generalization of a digital literacy among children. Schools are providing some courses about internet, how to react on social network, etc. But these specializations cannot give cannot go with the realization through school of citizens with critical and analytical. Uh, analytical ability. I think this is a larger matter of education. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Claire, for sharing these very important um, initiatives. And I think you make a very important point. Uh, you know, generally, uh, there is often a question, how can we actually, you know, what are the concrete steps we can take? And there is a lot, but when it comes to certain things like, like phase news, misinformation, we can give, you know, skills to children to understand that they, you know, go and check, double check the sources of what they read. But in the end, what we really need to teach them is to think critically about what they read, um, to read the whole story, um, to, you know, have that thinking. So indeed, it is a much broader broader approach and we heard that also earlier it goes into all spheres be it you know a sports context the school context the family context and so on and so forth so um yeah i think that 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 was uh, that was great to hear as well thank you so much for sharing so with that we have uh, closed our round our first round uh, of uh, speakers i think i would like to give the floor um to um to uh, the Bangladesh um, Remote Hub, um, who had a question or uh, a, a comment on what has been said so far. If we can please unmute the hub. Is the hub still with us? Sorry, funny. I don't see yeah. Bangladesh Hub anymore on the list, but yeah, maybe yeah, they, I they cannot see them there. either. Yeah. Okay. So with that, then maybe we can um, see if there's any other questions. So we would now move to our Q and A uh, part of the conversation. So I don't know if in the room there is any comments or questions uh, geared towards our speakers. Funny, or, are your um, eyes in the room? If you don't mind. There are plenty of hands here. Okay. <laughs> so I'll leave the Zoom to you, but I'll, I'll just help with the room. Let's just go on my left, start with Jennifer, and then we're going to make a circle. Thank you, Anya. Uh, my name is Jennifer Chung. I'm the Secretariat of the Asia Pacific Regional IGF. Just briefly, since I know that we have a lot of NRIs in the room and also in Zoom that want to make a contribution, um, just sharing a little bit on our meeting this year, we did have a showcase of a quite a special uh, initiative, an internet space that is dedicated to, to kids. It's called Dot Kids. And basically, I mean, it is an, a top level uh, registry, but the policies that surround this internet space is quite special because registries that you, as you all know, .com, .net, .org, they, they do have DNS abuse uh, um, guidelines that are that govern that space. But for a space that is dedicated and safe for kids to explore and learn and grow, there needs to be additional guidelines that uh, govern this space, including space for, for children to, to voice their agency as well as uh, mitigating, uh, uh, you know, abuse that comes in. So we, we've been trying to work quite closely with the DC on the children's right uh, online, uh, I think it's in the digital environment. I do see you, Takrol, who's the co-chair of that DC in, in this room. And I urge all of the NRIs to work closely with this DC because there's a lot of initiatives and a lot of expertise that they do have. And I believe they did a very, very substantive uh, uh, report 
on what happened in the general comment 25, where also there was children uh, and, and young people's uh, contribution that was substantively included in the public consultation. So not only do we look at the protection part of it, we need to also give agency to children, kids, and young people to be able to voice out what they hope to see in the digital space, how they want to create the digital space for their own future. Thanks. I think that's such an important point. Uh, you know, we had a conversation yesterday, um, similar the three P's. So, you know, moving from protection, provision to participation. So really, you know, that comprehensive indeed. Yeah, <laughs> that comprehensive um, approach to children's rights in the digital environment. Thank you for sharing. Um, Anya, I will let you um, continue in the room, please. Yes. Thank you, Fanny. I'm just going by the order that I see. Uh, um, I see Jimson is next. Thank you very much, James Lulufi Afikta. Well, I, I would like to commend the speakers. Uh, it's been an excellent presentation. And uh, of interest is the data provided by uh, the uh, speaker from China. Uh, very excellent presentation. I'm quite amazed that 99.2% of children have access to digital devices. Uh, well, <laughs> please confirm again. And then uh, I'm interested in knowing the, uh, the range of the children under consideration. And then, um, so I think from Nepal, yeah, you, you, you are trying to gauge which is better. Is it that maybe we prevent access to children or how do we, maybe by design, we should be able to mitigate uh, the issue of child online uh, abuse? Well, I, I would say really that uh, we should uh, give them access, but it should be controlled. And then maybe uh, say safety by design, as you mentioned too, is uh, would be uh, highly welcome. And then the regulators, they have a lot to do uh, in terms of uh, maybe rating the apps. You know, like in the movie industry, we do rating uh, so that uh, they do not have access to uh, illegal uh, uh, apps and so on. Then lastly. Um, I think we need more research. It would be good for the NRI uh, to do some research, uh, just like the Chinese have done. You know, that, that's very, I, I'm really still amazed at 99.2%. <laughs> I'm interested in knowing how that happened, okay? So, because in Africa, we, we, uh, I think we still need a lot of work to do. So, uh, we can take that thing up, so we can have, uh, we can measure the progress in that regard, and then uh, see the the, the progress uh, of the safety measures put in place to safeguard our, our children. So we need research, continuous research to do that. So if NRL headquarters can uh, you know, take that up, I think there will be organizations that will be able to fund that, I believe. Thank you. Thank you, Jimson. Um, then we have Ines here, and then, then let, yeah, let's go here and then. Thank you very much. Uh, so this is Ines Hafaid speaking from Tunisia. So I wear two hats, actually. I'm a teacher, uh, counselor, uh, and uh, under the Ministry of Education, and at the same time, the Africa representative in ICANN's uh, non-commercial users constituency. So the question is, thank you very much for a great, 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 really, session. Uh, many, uh, I learned so many things, took note of so many things. So I just, um, we always ask, uh, should it be top down or <laughs> bottom up i think uh the processes ha have to go uh, hand in hand because um when we say uh, top down we need the legal and legislative framework to protect children but at the same time it has to go bottom up from teachers and from counselors and also from the civil society to enter to be able to enter to schools uh, we have tried this uh, in tunisia uh, out of my personal willingness but not only me many teachers so we brought to the school uh, the internet society and also uh, we brought to this to school Mozilla uh, Mozilla sorry to name the the platform uh, to teach children about their safety online about their rights about how to be safe online so I think I just had uh, the suggestion that uh, both processes top down and bottom up have to be go hand in hand at, at the same time thank you
Thank you. And then who was next, sorry? Yeah, let's let's go there to I can't see, sorry, from the side. Is it Igonor then? There's nobody. Okay. Yes, please. Then let's go. Um okay, uh my name is Igonor Shoke. I'm a program manager for the Nigeria IGF and I just wanted to speak to uh, what uh, my brother from Nepal talked about, uh, also about design. And I think most time when we talk about design, we tend to focus on big tech and uh, neglect small tech in, in quotes. And I'm saying these are someone that has worked in software development for quite some time, uh, specifically to the issue of APIs. So for example, I had a personal experience on, on GitHub when uh, there was an API that I had to use and then I found out that it was connected to a database somewhere and it was going to keep on taking email addresses that were, were put. And you find that for most of the um, games that uh, children love, those small, uh, I think we call them, uh, these tap, tap games that children love, we use uh, many of these APIs in those games and many developers may not be aware or may just be oblivious to the fact that this might be harmful to children. So I think we need to um, equip regulators with not just the um, ability to um, provide policy recommendations but also to uh, s carefully look, take a look at source code, especially um, 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 separate APIs that are used in creating these things that, that children use. So that's like uh, BJ, what I wanted to speak about on, on design. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Igonor. So, wisdom briefly, then Yuta, and then we conclude in the room. And there's one hand online. My, my, yeah. my hand was up. Uh, uh, thank yes, you very much. Well. Um, my name is Wisdom, Executive Director of uh, ODEF. Um, yes, this uh, child online protection thing, I think we, especially I'm, I'm speaking from the African context. So the first one is um, for us to be able to really solve this problem, we first of all have to um, look at education in our homes. That is the first one. We need to go down to our homes and have program for these people. The second one is to look at society and then see the kind of things that uh, we do in society and then uh, address it. The third one is um, the educational sector, uh, our curriculum. We need to look at it, and then some of these things, we need to begin to integrate them into uh, our curriculum so that the next generation that is coming, we catch them at that level. If we refuse to do that, they will grow and learn from the old, and then it will keep on being in a, that cycle. So we need to start from some point and then grow with it. And then when they grow, it remains. The other one too is um, especially our rural communities. You know, these areas are still cut off. They are not online. What do we do to connect these people? We need to think about that. Also, we need to think about the safety aspect. So whilst we are thinking about connecting them, we are also thinking about the safety. So if you take a rural farmer, husband and wife as an example, when they go to farm and then they, I mean, they are back in their home, all of them live in one room. What happens in the, in the room, nobody knows. And then the children, whatever thing that uh, husband and wife are doing, the children are there, closing one eye, and then watching. And then when you give them that platform, and then, they are beginning to see those things, then that cycle continues. So we need to look at it and then uh, uh, address it. They're not discussing only at the top. Yeah, it looks like there is too much discussion at the top. We don't go to the people to pick those information. We need data. We need to start using data. We need to open up data to some of these things so that we can solve our problems uh, quickly. So this is what I have to say. Thank you very much, Wisdom. Nazar, then Yuta, we are, just to let you know, over time, three minutes. Uh, thank you, Anya. Uh, appreciate the time. Um, let me, uh, my name is Nazar Nicholas Kirama, uh, coordinator for the Tanzania IGF. And let me start with the, uh, the good news from Tanzania. Uh, the privacy and personal data protection that uh, stole like uh, 11 years ago uh, is about to be signed into law 
after going through the parliament. So um, that is a very good news for us because we know that now we have a guideline uh, not only to protect uh, individuals uh, but also to ensure that you know kids are protected online. Number two, uh, I believe that uh, as parents uh, uh, we have got a very a very big role to play because I have interacted with many parents, at least from the Tanzanian perspective, and they just leave their cell phones and smartphones to the kids to play with the smartphone without guidance. I think this is we are headed to the to the. Um, uh, to the unknown territory because um, as much as we love our kids you know we really need to exercise tough love uh, because um, if we expose uh, our kids to materials that are meant for adults then what is, is remaining of them so I think as parents we need uh, to, to, to play our part to make sure that you know our kids are safe uh, lastly, I think, uh, and I believe that uh, teachers um, uh, can play a very important role in terms of making sure uh, that you know our kids are protected. If at all uh, we we claim to be the the, the promoters of um, multi-stakeholder approaches to problem that we face uh, when it comes to um, uh, internet space and the internet governance space, it is very critical as NRI today to make sure that all of us, as we go back, we engage schools and boards of schools and the ministry that concerns about, you know, children. It is very critical because the more we engage with uh, you know with teachers and the departments that you know deal with uh, children affairs or the ministries the better uh, we position ourselves in terms of making sure that our our children are safe online i believe very one of us here has a, has a child um if you 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 don't have a child uh, i think sometimes in the future you will have one so I believe it, you know, it is one of our jobs that uh, we need to, um, to embark on to make sure that we, we protect our kids as, as they learn uh, to be part of the you know, um, uh, digital economy. Uh, thank you so much, and I appreciate the input from everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nazar. Let's quickly hear from Yuta, and I think we'll need to soon conclude. No, it's fine. Thank you. Thank you so much for giving me the floor and my apologize for being late for your session. I couldn't attend it due to other obligations. I just wanted to refer to, I've heard you speaking about safety by design and now we had these recommendations for parents, teachers to take care when educating children. Um, within the Dynamic Coalition on Children's Rights and the Digital Environment, we have just started developing an instrument for risk assessment of sexualized violence against children. And we do see also from, from a draft C, uh, CSA regulation uh, at the European Commission that risk assessment is the first step into understanding where the risks are for children. Usually we, we look at the end of the, of the escalation where we see child sexual abuse material occurring. So when the violence against the children has already taken place and these horrific images are spread around the internet. But it starts much er earlier and so we see that uh, on the one hand the service providers uh, who need to, to have a risk assessment before they can start a process of safety by design. They need to know where the risks are and the risks are not only in the content that is not appropriate for the children but in the contact so if children can be contacted on a certain platform by people they do not know so far, they are probably much older, then there the risk starts and it could end up with sexual violence against the children and so either in education or the service provider or in the better case both need to, take under, uh, to undertake steps from the beginning 
where is the contact and it's not only in in the areas where you would consider okay if a child goes to a dating app for example of course that might be dangerous and lead to a contact that that leads to abuse but it's also in areas like in games where on first sight you would not expect that there are dangerous contacts for children so we will we will publish this instrument for risk assessment soon uh, within the dynamic coalition and I just refer you to also the website I will spread some some cards here where, where you can find it soon and then let's discuss it in the next NRI sessions not only at IGF in, in Kyoto but maybe in your countries as well thank you so much thank you very much Jutta and everyone Fanny over to you Thank you. Thank you so much for these very, very important points. And indeed, you know, I think you two brought, brought it also together. I mean, there is the part on education and we had um, teachers. And as a matter of fact, they are those that parents that don't have the information turn to, um, you know, to search for support and guidance. But if there is no, um, you know, knowledge and awareness and education there as well, then, you know, the, the, the circle as we had um, goes on and on. And I think the industry piece and how do we engage, um, you know, the technology and how do we measure that um, that impact, but also have that assessment first. And I think that that will be a very, very important tool to have. So we're far over time, uh, but I think this, this discussion has been so important and relevant for everyone uh, online and in the room. So um, if I uh, may, I would like to allow our speakers in no more than one minute, please, uh, to express one call for action, something that you believe we all can do working together um, to address um, and and tackle the, the 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 challenge of online safety for children. So I um, will give the floor to um, Mr. Abdel Jalal, Jalil, please, for a one minute statement and call to action. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Firstly, we need collaboration, capacity building, uh, putting uh, children on the table of the decision making, and uh, the last one is action. Thank you. Core points. Thank you so much for being so brief. So um, over to um, Haiyan, please, for um, a call to action. Very sharp, short and sharp. Okay, okay. Can you hear me, yeah? Thank you. Uh, children's personal uh, information protection and the digital safety issues have always been the focus of the, our attention and the protection of their children's personal information and the digital safety requires the linkage of the multiple multiple entities such as the platforms, uh, society and the parents and the strength of the one party alone cannot create a good and healthy internet environment for children. Among them, the platform is a very important part while the platform protects uh, personal information and the digital safety for children. They also need of continuously strengthen content governance. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ayan. And maybe if I could ask you to confirm in the chat the number of 99% of children um, in China being connected. I think there was a question from the floor in the room, uh, really to have a confirmation on that number. Thank you. Um, please, um, uh, a call to action closing from Mr. Babu Ramarial um, in the room. Thank you. Uh, it's very important to protect uh, uh, children at home, and, and it's very precious, please. Uh, uh, to do uh, engagement for them so let's uh, protect uh, our kids uh, from home at the beginning and and uh, rather than blaming uh, technology let's uh, guide let's uh, educate them and and give more opportunity in the platform and in the cyberspace uh, uh, thank you Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we have also a knowledge sharing um, through a joining international initiatives in the chat. Thank you so much, Zaina, for sharing that as well. Um, please, uh, a call to action from Elizabeth Caesar from Nigeria. All right. Thank you. So um, two main things for me is collaboration by all relevant stakeholders so that they don't work in silos. And secondly, more capacity building opportunities for parents and teachers, so they understand how to perform the technical aspects on devices to ensure that all this, um, all the necessary 
set, set up parent, parental controls and all that is necessary is actually set up on the devices before the children make use of them. Thank you. Thank you so much. Very important points. And again, the double pillar and, and the streamline at, at, at all levels. Thank you so much. I think we did lose the French IGF. Um, so I'm we'll... there. I'm oh, there. You, okay. You I cannot me. see you. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Please, over to you. Um, there is a need to act quickly and to coordinate multiple layers and actors especially to tackle child exploitation and child pornography. Regulation is a necessity, but it is not sufficient. We need to improve also the educational field. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and we had you perfectly well. And with that, the last, last, last words and call to action, please, from those um, and you know the voice of those that is that we're talking about here and uh, so the last you know the last word is to you Diana as a young representative what is the call for action that you have for us for all of us to make this internet safer and more empowering for children like yourself yes thank you um, I really agree with educating parents and children because as we know all the rules that are said they're mostly broken so they don't have much impact anymore i would also say that i really like those projects and different organizations that have been organized for example i am a part of the microsoft council for digital good which is the reason why i'm also here on this call and i've been educated a lot i learned a lot so learning is what i would go for thank you Thank you so much for this um, very important point. And I think, you know, um, participation of children is, is, is really a key. So, you know, for us to understand, to have the data, but really to be able to shape the response as well. And uh, yeah, that may be complex, so participation is hard. So I think we just have to start. Um, and the same is on protection. So I'd like to thank all the speakers and you know also all the um colleagues uh, in the room and online that shared their thoughts and comments i think it was a very um fruitful and uh, um conversation with so many important points and uh, we can see that this is a topic that is very very relevant for all of us and it will only be more relevant in the future so um i'd like to thank you um and with that um close this session today thank you so much for participating And thank you, Ayan. Thank you, Ayan, for the great job you are doing. Uh, thank, you. The, uh, thank you. A big round of applause for Ayan and the team. <laughs>